Honestly, I think the thing that feeds my creativity, the thing that keeps me going so much, is I really, really do enjoy the finished product. I, I, I'm not going to say that I don't enjoy all the steps along the way, but that feeling of having written a book and it's out there and then getting responses to it and getting people say that they really appreciated um, feeling the representation they wanted, but also just having a happy, healthy love story. Um, and I love that so much that I, the stubbornness to keep going through all the difficult parts to get to that point. I'm also a problem solver. People always ask me, what's your favorite part of the process? And a lot of people I know, they love drafting. They love writing that story, like spewing it out for the first time. My favorite part is the first edit. It's probably the hardest part too. But me taking that messy, messy first draft and figuring out how to make it work with an outline if I have one, but figuring out how to work with the romance beats and to make the tension right and to make the chemistry right and to make sure the jokes land, I love kind of fitting that puzzle together. Um, so I really look forward to that point even though I do also find it the most difficult and it stresses me out too. But that kind of keeps me going because I want to get to that point. So I definitely learned quickly with writing. I am a, I don't like to use the term obsessive person, but I am a bit of an obsessive person. And anything I try and do, I try and learn as much as I possibly can about it before I feel I'm, I'm ready to do it. The biggest thing that I learned is not to uh, grow too attached to my work or my words. Um, and to, it's funny, I was speaking with some other writers yesterday, actually. And we were talking about the spaghetti method, which is basically you throw things at the wall and see what sticks. And that's basically how I've approached writing. So I keep working at it. That first manuscript, when I started querying it, it was, it was short. I was aiming for around 50 to 60,000 words. And I wanted like a short contemporary romance. Um, but when I started to hear feedback, and I don't know if it was because of the market at, at the time, I don't know if it was because the story had uh, an interracial romance and it had a lot of family, in it. I don't know if that was the reason, but a lot of the feedback I got said that it was really more general fiction or women's fiction and not romance, but they said it needed to be longer to, do, to be general fiction or women's fiction. So I said, okay, I will make it longer then. And I think that was just basically my approach. If, if I get feedback that this is what I'm doing, I'm instead of being very attached to what the project I'm working on, I'm willing to, okay, so let's start over. Let's see what, where this can go, where that can go. Uh, I think a lot of that is because I did come into writing a little bit later in life. I wasn't attached to any bad habits or ideals or anything like that, and I was willing to, to adapt as I go. I do have like a handful of, of friends in my back pocket, I like to say, that I will approach when I have something that needs critique or something. And I'm always looking for new ones. I'm always looking for different perspectives instead of growing um, to attach to the people that I've worked with for a while, especially as I'm dipping my toes in other age categories and things like that. I think having different feedback from different places can be helpful. So I do have a, a group of South Asian writing friends who I go to, especially when I'm looking for brainstorming help. I really like it to have somebody different from who's reading my work to help me brainstorm new story ideas. I'm not one of those writers that can, has 300 ideas in the back of my head, so I do have to work to coming up with these new ideas, and it really helps to have somebody bounce something off of. It's funny, I sometimes write really well in the morning. Usually I tend to write really well more in the evening. Um, I basically just systematically go through my deadlines, whether I'm ed editing a book or whether I'm doing a read-through or whether I'm drafting. I just go through it. I don't find that it makes a difference to me whether I'm like drafting in the morning and editing in the afternoon. I just go through whatever work I'm doing at the time. Sometimes I write with lots of music and lots of noise around me, and then some days I absolutely need absolute quiet. Sometimes I work work on, a, on an outline first and I try and, and plot out as much as I can and then other books I just kind of just go in there and see what happens. So I don't, I don't tend to have the same process. I find as I'm writing more books um, I have to change my process to fit the industry. Like when I, when I was starting out I could just sit down and come up with the story and, and spew it out, but now I have to do outlines and they want a synopsis beforehand and I have to have a blurb. So I do have to kind of adjust the way that works for me um, to whatever the industry wants. 
I found it very, very difficult to write, especially at the very beginning of the pandemic. I write rom-coms, and it was very difficult to be funny and to have that light voice um, when we weren't sure what was going on in the world and we weren't sure um, who, who of our loved ones would be affected. I found it very difficult to write uh, rom-coms, to write those light, fluffy, funny stories um, when we weren't sure what was going on in the world. And I think, uh, I, I mean, I did write, I've written two, three books during the pandemic so far. I think with any obstacle that I've come across with writing, I've been able to adjust my method to make it work because I had no I have no choice but to keep going. And I don't mean I have no choice because the industry wants me to, but I want me to, and I'm that stubborn, and I want to keep I want to keep this career. So I find a way to make it work. I found a way to make um, make it work to work with my husband and my two kids at home with me every day when I was used to writing alone all the time, and how to work in a small with more people and. Um, more deadlines and where I was promoting a book while still writing another book. So I've had to adapt um, with all of these obstacles that will come my way. Rom-coms are very um, popular right now and I think they're, they're great fun to write. But sometimes it can be hard to balance the rom and the com, I say, in a rom-com. My biggest advice is to make sure that neither the rom or the com outshines the other. One of the things that really um, that bothers me in rom-coms, or one of the things I don't think it hits as well, is when you are using things like humiliation tactics on the, on the characters to make funny, um, slapstick and things like that. But sometimes that can take away from the ability of, for the reader to fall in love with the character, because that's what we're doing in a romance, is the reader is falling in love with the couple, with each of them individually, as they're, as they're falling in love with each other. And if your comedic elements is taking away from, your, from the reader's ability to fall in love with the character, then you're not gonna have, um, then the, the rom part, the romance isn't gonna hit. And the same thing goes the other way around for a rom-com. Sometimes you're, if it's too angsty, or if it's too dark, um, with the romance part, then you can't make the, f the funny work. So rom-com is very much a balance. You do need the emotion. You do need like a strong emotional backbone to it for, for the romance to work. But I think finding the balance can be tricky. And I think the most important thing is that you want your readers to love and respect your characters as much as they love and respect each other. To Hear and Bloom is a young adult romance and it's about a teen fashion designer. It's actually a two book um, series. She has big dreams of taking over the fashion world. She's very urban, she lives in Toronto. She has a fashion internship for the summer that falls through. So she's stuck having to move to her aunt's house and working in her aunt's teeny tiny boutique in a very small rural community. While there she figures out a way to get some fashion cred, believe it or not, in this tiny town through their annual floral uh, sculpture contest. So she enters this floral sculpture contest with the boy next door. Um, he's a plant nerd. And they enter the contest together and they fall in love. The second one's not titled yet, but it will be about Tahira's sister, Samaya. I'm working on it right now, and hopefully it will be out next fall. My next adult book will be out in the spring, and it's called Camila Knows Best. So it's an adult rom-com, and it's a retelling of Jane Austen's Emma. And it was kind of a departure for me. It's the first time I've ever tried to do a retelling. So it's set in Toronto. It's a big South Asian community that it takes place in, and Camila is, she's, just like Emma, she's full of life. She has a lot of friends, she's social, and she's bigger than, bigger than I would say than the world she lives in. The story takes place with her in Toronto, dealing with how she's perceived in the world. One of my, one of my favorites is Sonali Dev. Um, I am lucky enough to call her friend now, but I actually started writing South Asian stories because of her. When I first started writing, I w didn't write South Asian characters because I didn't think that was a thing that I could do. I had never read a North American set romance with South Asian characters until I read Sonali's The Bollywood Bride. I credit her for like, oh, this is a possibility. Maybe I should try. But also her stories are so emotional and they're so, they're, they're just such fabulous, big stories with big families and big friend groups and characters, and I just love the way she weaves it all together. Uh, another one that I really love is Christina Lauren. I think I admire Christina Lauren mostly because there's two of them, um, and I, I can't imagine how amazing it would be to have that kind of mind meld with someone to work so well together for so long 
and all of the books are funny. They're all very romantic. Some of them have high heat, some of them have low heat. There's a little bit of everything, but you just get this amazing package. And I think it's because their brains are just so in sync with each other. And then, of course, my, my probably my favorite romance author is Tessa Dare. Tessa's voice kind of turned me into wanting to write rom-com. I love the way she will write the funny and the emotional together, and I find that she, she does it best of, of balancing the two without taking away from the others. Thank you.